Hello and welcome to this Open TX Quick Tip. This is a very quick one about radios like this. This is the Radio Master TX16S, but it also is uh, relevant for things like the Free Sky radios, jumper radios, anything really running Open TX. Now, there's actually two lots of firmwares or software, if you want to think of it like that, on the radio. There's Open TX and another one. And I've had three people in the last two weeks get caught out by this. Uh, including somebody that is uh, a leading figure in the hobby who uh, you'd have thought would have understood this, but because they're not a radio person, um, they weren't aware of it either and got themselves in a bit of a pickle. So I'm making this video so that this is well understood and people understand this. So if you are about to update OpenTX, you understand what you're doing and what you're not doing, most importantly. So let's start at the very beginning. The two types of firmware, the first firmware we'll talk about is OpenTX. Now, OpenTX is the stuff on the radio. When you power it up, it says, Welcome to OpenTX. And it's the bit of the radio that does all this stuff. So you've got all of the controls. This is where you set your menus, your models up, how you do your displays and everything else. Now, OpenTX is updated via OpenTX Companion on your computer. You plug in a USB cable and away you go. I'll put a link down below to show you how you do that. There are lots of options in OpenTX, including whether or not you have EU support, Lua C scripts, whether you have Heli um, support turned on, lots of little radio buttons when you go to flash the radio. And depending on what you select, depends on what features are installed as part of your OpenTX that you put onto the radio or that you do the update for. However, that is not the full story. There's another set of firmwares. Hidden away, inside the module connected to your antenna, is another set of firmware that takes all the outputs from OpenTX of how you want to fly and then encodes them and sends them via the antenna through the air into the receiver in your module. And similarly, gets the telemetry back from those receivers, if it's a telemetry receiver, and then passes that back up to OpenTX. Now that firmware is completely separate from OpenTX, and it could be something like ACCST, which is what the older radios were. You can see it there in the bottom of the screen. If the There we go, ACCST. Um, it could be Access, which is the FreeSky new version, or it could be a multi-protocol module uh, like this and things like the latest jumper radios have. How OpenTX is installed and set up changes very slightly depending on the module that you have, but not an awful lot. The module's job is to take the output from OpenTX of how you've got everything set up and just encode it and send it out on the antenna. So there's actually two parts to the radio. The, the, the one that you're probably aware of, OpenTX, and this other little squirrely one inside too. So there are a couple of wrinkles you need to think of for the um, internal module firmware. First of all is that for lots of it, there's an LBT, listen before talk version of the firmware that's uh, supposed to be used in the EU. And you need to also have that same LBT firmware on your receiver. If you don't, they won't talk to each other. The non-EU version is usually denoted as FCC, and you can download that from the on the website. You can usually flash between the two versions. However, on the later Free Sky radios, when I've tried to flash EU models, they seem to be locked. Uh, so you can only flash it from FCC, i.e. non-EU to EU, but not EU to FCC. The other thing that's catching a lot of pilots out at the moment is that if you update your receivers to the latest and greatest firmware version from FreeSky, version 2.1 as I'm recording this, they won't talk to your radio unless you also update the radio's internal firmware on the module to be 2.1 as well. Now again, I did a whole video about that. I'll put a link below if you want to know more. But to update the internal module, it's exactly the same process as you would update a receiver. You go to the website, you download the version of the firmware that you're interested in, you copy it into the firmware directories on your SD card, then go into the system memory, navigate to the firmwares folder, select the file that you want to flash onto your internal module, uh, and hit enter, and then say uh, flash internal module rather than external, and then that will flash the one inside, and then you can power cycle it and you'll be away. So that's the big thing that I want you to take away from this video, if nothing else. OpenTX, when you flash OpenTX, doesn't flash 
the transmission electronics with a new version of the firmware. That's a separate thing. There are lots of little hiccups around the, these versions here. Again, with the links in this video, hopefully it'll get you sorted. A lot of people at the moment seem to be bumping into the issue where they're going to the FreeSky website, downloading the latest and greatest version of the firmware for their receivers and then getting into trouble. My advice would be at the moment, if you're not experiencing any issues and you're flying fine, uh, rather than update your radio and then have to update every single one of your receivers, just flash the receiver with the version 1.x, which is still on the website. It's just slightly hidden away. So now you know next time when you're flashing your radio with OpenTX, you're only flashing the bit that you deal with. The bit that deals with the airside communication is completely different. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the inner circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject, starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.